Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be doing um, a little bit of watercolor, a little bit of colored pencils. I'm using the Cosmos background from Simon Says Stamp, which is a new uh, stamp from them. And um, I showed you some other stamp sets <laughs> and I'm not using either the die or the stamp that I showed you. Didn't work out that way. Um, so with that being said, buckle up buttercup because this is a long video. You might want to pause it now, wait until your kids are asleep, you got a cup of coffee, whatever. So in order to do the kind of no line of watercoloring I want to do, I'm stamping on Canson watercolor paper in antique linen. And I only inked up the bottom half of the stamp. Um, so my idea was kind of to have like it looked like a field of cosmos that was kind of my goal uh, so I just wanted to stamp the bottom because I think the entire background is beautiful but I was not watercoloring that entire background so here I am starting um, by just putting down a line of color this is Quinn purple and um, I'm going to rinse off my brush bring it back with clean clear water, blot off the base of my paintbrush, and then put down um, just kind of a sheen of clean clear water and take that to the pigment. With that said, um, I kind of, like it's funny how like techniques that you don't do all the time, like I don't watercolor all the time, though I certainly am doing it now more than I have in probably the last three years. Um, if you're not doing it all the time, how you can sometimes forget, and that color really got away from me on that first petal. It was just way too bold. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I let it sit for a minute and then I went back with a dry brush and kind of like scoop, almost like scooped it up. If you go back into a wet area with a dry brush, instead of putting down pigment, it will actually pick it back up. So that's what I use that to my benefit to kind of pull up some of that color. And so each time I'm doing the same thing. I'm putting down a small line of color, or if it's a larger petal like this one, I will add um, a little more than a small line, and then rinsing off the brush, blotting off the base of the bristles, and then going in, laying down clean, clear water, taking the clean, clear water to the pigment. Um, I did struggle with this a little bit, especially for the larger petals. Um, I just had a hard time getting it to come out as f like the color to move out as far as I wanted it to and um, I like bold color I like intense color so I do have a tendency to go back and add in more pigment I also really like um, in my watercolor um, a bunch of colors so I'm used the um, Quinn Rose and kind of went back and added that to the purple now every single one of these flowers does have another color added into it it's never just one color um, so this one was the the Quinn purple and the Quinn rose and um, I was I was really happy with the way that they kind of mixed together I thought it was super pretty um, but I'm going to show you this flower in real time and then I am going to speed it up just a little bit because um, it did take me a long time uh, talking to um, my friend Dawn who does more traditional watercolor um, basically I was like dude I don't know how you do this all the time I don't know how you have time in your life to do anything else besides watercolor and she was like no no it's just getting comfortable with the medium she was like because you know something like this might take you two hours now but if you keep doing it it'll take eventually it'll take you like 20 minutes very similar to how my Copics worked for me when I first started coloring with Copics it took me a really really long time to get a project done um, and now I'm down to about start to finish the entire card takes me an hour so from the very beginning to the very end um, but anyway, the reason that this video is so long is because I did have some hiccups along the way. Not so much with the water coloring, um, but more with the background, but we'll get there when we get there. So for this, um, I don't have any areas in the purple flower where everything is dry and I can kind of work next to them so I'm moving on to the next flower you don't want to work in two areas that are wet next to each other they'll bleed into each other and then you'll kind of lose out on any of that separation a lot of times I find um, people will talk about that they um, it got mushy or blobby or um, it just looked like a big old mess um, usually that means you have too much water on your paper or you aren't waiting for those things to dry in between um, so you just want a minimum amount of water for this particular technique for something this controlled um, minimum amount of water you it should just look like 
um, a wet sheen on your paper. It should not be bubbled up at all. Um, the That type of technique is something that's totally different, but for this one, for something like this, you don't want it to be um, raised. So anywho, um, around about now, well, shortly, we're going to be um, speeding up the the coloring, like I said, because otherwise we'd be here forever. We're already going to be here forever. Let's be honest, we're spending almost 30 minutes together. Okay, so in my last video, we talked about two truths and a lie. Um, so I thought it was super interesting to see what you guys had put down. Um, I tried to get to all of them. I did not get to all of them because my computer had some serious issues. Uh, apparently, in the last Windows update, um, there was some sort of something that went awry. And basically, if my computer went to sleep, it would not, the, the screen went black, like black screen of death. So I took it in. Basically, it was pointless. I was without my laptop for three days. And um, they, they said that it was the Windows update. They were going to fix it, blah, 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 blah. And by the time I got it back home, it did it again. So I rolled it back myself. Here's hoping that it works. Um, but that's also why you may notice that my voiceover quality might be different. Because now I have to play around with it again until I get the settings where I want them to be. So I thought that this was okay. We'll see how it goes from there and if we have to um, adjust some more. But anyway, that is why I didn't get to every single comment on the two truths and a lie. But um, so my, just to remind you, my two truths and a lie were um, I am an only child. I almost didn't graduate high school and uh, I've never broken a bone. So my lie is actually um, I'm an only child. I'm not. I'm one of three. My parents had three daughters. I'm the youngest. I'm the baby of the family. Um, so a lot of you who watched my videos before knew, uh, you've heard me talk about my family, talk about my sisters. And so you knew I wasn't an only child, which means that I have in fact never broken a bone, knock on wood. I'm just jinxed myself here. Um, and I did almost not graduate high school. So, um, but several people were like, I can't wait to hear that story. It isn't really, I mean, I'll tell you because I know apparently you guys are interested in knowing me as a person. Uh, I'm really not that fascinating, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, so basically, when I was in high school, um, this is like back in the day when we weren't just on top of every single thing that our kids were doing. Um, there would be times where I wouldn't go to class or I would skip school or, you know, I was that kid. Um not that I would encourage you to be that kid, don't be that kid. Uh, because basically, uh, at the end of the day, I found out that um, I was not going to graduate. Like I was a senior and I had put everything off and had not done what I was supposed to do and not been responsible. And um, they were like, yeah, so there's consequences for your actions, genius. You aren't going to graduate. And uh, I was totally devastated, um, really more so for my mom and dad than for myself. Because, you know, obviously you raise a child, you want these things for them. And here I am, like, I'm not even going to have a high school diploma. So I had to go to summer school to graduate. Uh, I did not walk at commencement uh, with the rest of my graduating class. So that was like, you my first adult kind of eye opener of the things that you do, the decisions that you make have real life consequences. And um, nobody's going to come and fix those things for you. And sometimes they're not fixable. Uh, so once that happened, um, I kind of made my, I kind of made the commitment that I owed them that commencement. And so, um, I, I had a, maybe like, I don't know, I was dating this guy and it was not, he wasn't doing anything. So I wasn't doing anything. I lovingly refer to that, um, portion of my life as me being an oxygen bandit, basically, where I was just not, <laughs> I was not um, contributing to society whatsoever. And I was just sucking up all the oxygen for all the useful people. That's how I felt. Um, but uh, so anyway, um, I enrolled in college, got a job, got my driver's license. And I had always worked. I had had a job since I was 14. And this was just like a lull in um, my quote unquote careers. Um but so anyway, I did it all in one month and I kind of just committed to myself that I was going to, um, I was going to graduate college and give my parents um, the commencement that they missed out on because I was too busy not doing the things that I was supposed to do. So um, 
a lot of times people will ask me if I have any, uh, if I have an art background or if my degree is in art. Uh, it is not. I have a, a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. That's what I went to school for. Uh, back in the day, I wanted to be a police officer. That didn't end up working out for me, um, but that's okay because um, what was meant to be was meant to be, and it's all right. So my only art, quote unquote, background is I took one art. I mean, like the elementary school art classes we all have to take, and then um, I took one art class in high school, which I actually failed. I'm not even kidding you. Yeah. <laughs> true story. Um, <laughs> that should have been one of my tr one of my truths or a lie. That would have been good. Um, but yeah, so I failed that art class, um, and, but that's the only art class that I have ever taken. Um, so yeah, good times. But there was just like a ton of interesting ones that you guys, you know, had put down there. And I thank you so much for participating because it was just a lot of fun to learn about you. And I think maybe for you guys to learn about each other, which is super cool. Um, so yeah, this whole computer thing is just, ugh. I was so stabby, guys. I really was. Um, because I, the from the first buying my computer, the audio was just like off. And so I had to mess around with the settings. And then every single time they do an update, the audio is off again. And then so I have to kind of redo it. And um, they, their turnaround time is two days. That's the minimum, minimum of two days that you have to be without your computer. And I use my computer every single day, obviously, for this portion of my quote unquote job. Um, so yeah, I was like not happy. But thankfully, I have wonderful parents who allowed me to borrow their laptop so that I could kind of do some of the things that I needed to do. And um, now I have mine back. Um, and it seems to be working. I disabled any of the updates. Like this thing is going to die on the vine with the archaic software that it currently has. Because I'm not doing another Windows update. I don't care. I'm not doing it. Um, so yeah. The the flower um, that I'm working on right now is... Um, I think it's a Rulian. Or it might be Indian yellow. Um and um quin gold and so it looks like i told you all the flowers were two colors and usually they're two colors that weren't necessarily in the same family i started doing this flower with the lighter yellow and i didn't really like the depth i was getting so i brought in the um the quin gold and then that um that seemed to work pretty well i also some of these flowers if you look at the stamp if you own the stamp or if you look at it online it's a beautiful stamp set. I love it. Um, so, well, it's not a stamp set. It's a background stamp. You know what I'm saying. Um, but I ha I reshaped some of the flowers. I actually had it sitting off to the left-hand side so I could kind of see what they looked like. But sometimes I just got in my little zone and was painting away. And then I looked up and I was like, huh, that's not supposed to look like that. But as Dawn frequently tells me, um, anything can be a flower. So I was able to move it along. So I did paint the rest of them. You saw each color one time, and now I'm adding that bright yellow to the center of them. And um, I'm gonna go back um, and add some details. You'll we'll, you'll see later on once once we get there. So I'm painting in the stems now, and here's where I made one of my first errors. Painting in the stems with this is sap green, and then you can see there's a stem that goes to nothing. See it? right there because I'm not painting all the flowers. So I tried to pick it up. I was not fast enough. And then, so now we're going on to plan B, which is just fill it all in with color. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm just filling it all in um, with a, a lighter version of that green. I'm going to add in uh, some of that brighter yellow and then also a little bit of the, what is it? Ultra, I think it's ultramarine turquoise, I think is what it is. Um, just so that there's some color variation down there. This was not my original game plan, um, but I, you know what? When you things happen, you adapt, and that's just, it is what it is. You just go for it. So, um, pardon my sniffling, by the way. I've had to restart this voiceover, like stop it and start it again, like three times so I could sneeze. I don't know what's going on. Um, so I'm blending that top edge out. Now you could leave it like this. Now you'll see some of that stamping down there. Um, I'm just going to go over it. This is a number eight. I've been painting with a number two, but this is a number eight round brush. And I'm just going to go in there with clean, clear water. And it kind of um, just wipes out that ink. 
So you could totally do that and leave this white. I'm not going to do that, as you can clearly see. And some of you are going to be thinking, hmm, Kelly, why'd you just ruin this card? Um, <laughs> at some points, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought, Kelly, why did you just ruin this card? Um, so this is that Quinn Gold. I'm going to um, kind of like do some streaks, kind of wipe off some of that area. And then I'm going to go back in with um, some darker color. At first I thought I was going to go horizontal and then I changed my mind and went vertical. I think that was a much better plan in the end. I didn't tape this down. I probably should have um, because I ended up holding it kind of like with my fingernail so I wouldn't pick up any of the color. Um, definitely at this point when I'm adding in, I think it's permanent brown. Um, anyway, at this point I'm definitely thinking, woo girl, you just painted these flowers for like two hours of your life and what have you done? What have you done? Um, but it's going to be okay. So I'm going back in and I have just like a damp brush and I'm kind of blending that out. Ultimately, what this background is going to be is not this hot mess that you're seeing right now. Ultimately, what it's going to be is um, wooden planks, like a wooden fence, like the flowers are, are growing up against this wooden fence. That's the goal. So I added a little bit of a cooler brown. I, so I mixed some blue into my brown. I made it a little bit cooler. I'm going to see what I can do to kind of fade out that edge at the bottom. And then also at the top, um, I knew this is a six by six uh, piece of watercolor paper. I knew I was going to be cutting some of it down, but I wasn't really sure at this point where I was going to be cutting it from. So I ended up cutting off the right hand side and the top of it. And now that this is done, we're going to go in with, um, I'm using Prismacolored pencils to just add in some detail work. If you are extremely comfortable with watercolor, you can certainly do these details with watercolor. I'm just not. So I'm going to do it with colored pencils. Um, I'm going to go in and kind of add back in those um, lines and give the petals maybe a little bit more shape. So for each color, um, each color flower, I pulled out a coordinating color, um, colored pencil. And you just, you hear people say all the time when you're using colored pencils, you want to make sure you have a really sharp edge. Um, for me in this, because I wanted those lines to be fine, that was actually really important, uh, to keep that tip sharp. Otherwise the lines kind of start to fatten out and, um, they're not as crisp, which is not what I wanted. So I'm adding kind of like some striations up from the bottom petals. I'm going to add, you know, anywhere between two and five on from the top of the petal. And then um, also the, even the ones that curl over will have, you know, some striations there. There isn't really, uh, you can look at the stamp um, in this particular one. You can look at the background stamp and see kind of where those are at. I didn't do that. I didn't feel like I needed to be that particular about where they went. I would just wanted them to have a little bit um, more depth and detail. Uh, but again, this they're pretty. They're super pretty. Just watercolor. You don't have to do this part. I just wanted them to kind of be in the forefront of the card, and I knew what I was trying to do to the background. Um, so I wanted to make sure that the the flowers were going to have enough detail to kind of be the star of the show. Um, so I went through and did all of those. For the centers, Cosmos typically have like bright yellow um, or yellowish orange dependent um, centers. So I wanted it to be that bright yellow, but I also wanted there to be some depth. So I'm using a lighter brown colored pencil and all I'm really doing is making little dots, what they call stippling. And um, then I'm going over that with the yellow to kind of blend it out in that same dot fashion. Um, I'm going to use a green colored pencil to kind of fill in any of those areas between the flowers. I was too nervous to use a paintbrush in. Um, and then I'm also going to use it to try to blend in um, a little bit more into my fence. Um, speaking of the fence, we're going to start doing that now. Basically what I did was I started with my lightest color because I really had no idea what I was doing straight up. No clue. Um, and I'm basically blocking out um, like panels of wood. That's what I'm doing. And I'm doing it first with my lightest color. Once I was happy with where they were, I went back in with my darkest color. Um, I used three different browns for this fence, by the way. And so you can kind of start to see how that's going to look like wood. 
I'm going to um, draw in some wood grain and for this right now I'm using um, again that back to that lightest color there isn't a right or a wrong way to do this um, I just do little lines or swirls um, knots in the wood um, just anything to kind of make it look more wood like you could even do just like simple kind of wonky lines and leave off the the knots or the swirls and it would still give the impression of wood and because I'm kind of uncomfortable with what I'm trying to do here I am going really um, kind of light in the beginning so once I had all of that wood grain down now I'm going to start adding in my depth or um, my shading and basically next to each one of those dark lines which delineates a quote-unquote panel or a plank of the piece of fence um, I am adding a little bit of shading to the right hand side and then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to darken that up kind of each time and then go back all the way out to my lightest color just to give it a little bit of dimension now I have to tell you I'm working I told you I was working on Canson watercolor paper and um, I didn't love the texture now I'm going to try to cover that up some I'm going to go back in now with my darkest color and just kind of redo that wood grain this isn't like you didn't have to do it with the lightest color in the first place and you don't have to go back in and do it darker now um, there isn't anything wrong with one or the other of them I just wanted I was trying to get rid of that paper texture is what I was trying to do and this it was not good so at this point it looks like this it's super textured um, I don't love it um, I actually was I now I'm trying to blend that grass in again by doing like little strands of um, pieces of grass strands of grass and so at this point I'm on the phone with my friend uh, Dawn and I'm like do you remember the movie Clueless where they're like walking through the quad and she says um, you know something about a girl being pretty or something and she was like oh you know from far away she like she's a total Mona Lisa from far away she's super pretty but when you get up close to her it's just like a big old mess um, that's how I felt about this card <laughs> and I was like okay I'm gonna try this and this card may never see the light of day like honestly um, so what I've done is now I've gotten the gamsol which Dawn nicely pointed out I was pronouncing wrong uh, there's no a or I or O in between the M and the S it's just gamsol I always want to say gamma sol gamma sol anyway that's wrong there's no vowel in there um, so anyway I'm using a blending stuff and this gamsol to um, go back and kind of smooth that out because I don't like the texture there's nothing wrong with the texture and some people really like the texture that colored pencils leave behind but because I'm working on watercolor paper which is already textured and then adding pencils on top of it I was just not in love with it guys so this was kind of my fix once I put the gamma all down I was like hallelujah this might be salvageable I didn't just like completely ruin my card so I went through and I did all of the panels that way here's where I decided I wasn't going to use the sentiment that I had originally picked and the reason I didn't is because of that perfection which I think is beautiful and I will definitely use on another card was too long I would have had to cut through one of my flowers and quite frankly I didn't want to do it so I instead I picked the oh hello there which is still that same kind of beautiful script font and I am bulking these up I'm pulling a Laura Bass in and gluing a bunch of them together to um, just get some kind of like weight in there and I did that all I did like four layers of white cardstock so once I had them all glued together then I'm ready to glue them onto the card and normally I don't do a white sentiment normally I do a black sentiment and I was actually really surprised at how well I liked it that white kind of popping up from that fence and it was big enough to um, fill up that area which I really liked so that the flowers were still um, kind of the star of the show in the front and then um, you know that sentiment kind of filled up that fence area so here I'm using some uh, white Nouveau drops to just accent the sentiment that I have there and then I'm going to put some clear Wink Stella on my letters and on my actual flowers 
and then that's the whole card. So you made it to the end. You are amazing. Thanks for hanging in there. I hope you guys learned something, are inspired to maybe give something a try, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.